Hey guys, and uh, today we're going to be doing a teardown. I haven't done one of these on the channel before, and so I'm going to try to do it now. I don't have any way to hold my phone, so it's I'm just going to put it in my left hand because I'm right-handed. So, what we have here is a D-Link gateway that I have no use for because you program it over a console port, not USB or something a modern computer has. And I can't think of another machine that we own that has one of these. So, what's going to happen is, I'm just going to take it apart, try to figure out how it works, and see what I can salvage. Now, I already took the feet off there, oh, two of them are over there, to see if I needed security screws or not. Like, because I, I got these like two years ago and I am yet to use them. So, first step, try to... Hold the camera and take it apart. One second. Ow. Now, you should be able to crack the case open. Put the screws somewhere I'll be able to find them. Then, here's the main board. So, there's some capacitors, some real take. A, don't know if you can see that, but it's an OK chip. See if I can get this to focus. 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 Ah, come on. ISIS chip. <laughs> sure. We have a Delta Land something, something, something. 5 volts single 1998 before I've said that uh most of my hardware is from the 90s and this just further reinforces that I mean I don't use this gateway in any of my networks but the parts that were previously connected to it back in my old house where we had servers and crap all over the place in the basement this was our security. But we have a, let's go back to what we have here. Two. Two Ethernets, I believe local is in and global is out, because local computer uh global internet console would be how you program it. So we don't know how to what the passwords are or why are planes going over so much. But, yeah. So, I don't know much about how these things work, so let's just take it apart. Where's a prying device when you need it? Okay. Huh. Let's see what we can pull out of it. Well, no clue what any of these chips are for. A few five five timers. I take those because I need those to finish off the coil gun. Cause I need to get some timing on it. We had this turned on a while ago, so I'm gonna short the caps. So we have a little diode. Does not show what direction it's in. So I assume that's just for the input, which is like 15 volts or something. I know it's something ridiculous. Oh, 9 volts. My router was 15 volts. Okay. 
Yeah, I think sucked power. Hey, why don't we try to turn it on? Yes, all 20-some outlets are necessary. Uh, stuck on my power supply. Yeah. It's good. So we're going to plug it in. And it's that red light's going to flash. That's the error light. What any of these other lights mean, I have no freaking clue. So let's look at the top of the case. So red air, power link, 110, full half and link. So we have power and air. The air is probably, it's not hooked up to anything. So, ow. These are hot. Dio, da, 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 never heard it. Ow, hot. 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 So, yeah. Most stuff on this board will burn you. So, since I have no clue what any of this does, and I've never heard of most of the manufacturers, let's just take it apart. Start with what we need. And me finding a way to hold this camera better. Okay, so we're gonna start taking this apart. I hope I'm getting a good angle on this. So, I do need one of these barrel jacks. So we're gonna get my soldering iron and hopefully not burn the camera. Move the soldering station closer. Then we're gonna try to take out the barrel jack, I guess. The thing about uh, old equipment is they use leaded solder, and that m melts at a much higher temperature than normal solder. So I have my soldering iron at around 800 degrees, within a few inches of the camera. So, oh look at that! If you can see this on camera, it's like a fiberglass. It's not really fiberglass. It's like it's the board's stringing, like the. Uh, that is fiberglass. Don't know if you can see that, but that looks a lot less safe than a modern board. So, I guess I'm probably not going to take this apart, but I can't find a good way to hold it where the camera can see it. I mean, hold the camera where it can be seen. So, well, I have an idea. I'll try to work like this, I guess. So, let's just talk about how it's made. I mean, why not? If you want to turn it off now, go ahead. Now it's focused, I can show you some more of the chips and stuff too. So we have a chip that's labeled OK is AMD. wonder what that is. AMD AM1 something something B1. AMD. Don't know if you can see this, but AMD here on this chip. Then Intel. Okay, so it's an i3 APU, joking, so let's try to figure out what some of these do, so we have the two ISIS chips, uh, those might just be LED drivers, 
We have a Texas Instruments. O one A two two KK. Can't get a date on that one. Well, at least I don't think. Ninety K. So nineties era parts, I'm assuming. It might be a date code. Wind just knocks something over my backyard. Enable. Never heard of that company, so 88, 98, I mean, 5 volt, this is probably a voltage regulator, but why would it need so many pins? Sorry if I'm not keeping this in frame or anything. So we have the Enable 5 volt voltage regulator, I guess. I wasn't recording this on my phone, I'd look up some of these IDs and stuff. So we have a LAN F7037307. I can't read numbers sometimes. 08 and 07. I don't know what the difference between those are. Another real take chip. Real take semiconductors. Made in Taiwan. I wonder. I wonder how many of these companies other than AMD, Intel, and Realtek are still in business. Because I've never heard of any of these. Let's keep going, I guess. We have a... Never AMD. I keep it where you can see it. CSEs, something, something, something. A... 2 hertz crystal, 25 hertz crystal, a 40 hertz, that's a 20 hertz, I should say. Look at this, missing a diode. One of the things you really have to appreciate about this board is there aren't any random jumper wires. It's all fitted onto the board, single, no, double sided, because there's traces on both sides. And it doesn't look like it's multi-layered I don't see any really well that might be a ground plane no so there aren't a lot of ground planes minus these that wouldn't really uh, that wouldn't really go to over too well with modern safety regulations and stuff. And the fact that this heats up so much when you turn it on might not either. Then again, my Raspberry Pi overheated because I had it sitting on top of a router, which put off a lot of heat. I've never seen LEDs like this before. I mean, I haven't seen them with this cup on them. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna try to take it apart again. One of the best ways to remove solder is, though it may sound counterintuitive, add more. the angle. Where did I put it? Okay, let's try this again. Get 
a better prying implement. And we're going to try to heat the board. A lot of what I'm doing here is kind of dangerous, so don't repeat. You hurt yourself, it's not my fault. You were stupid enough to do something I did. I don't think I should be hissing like that. I wonder why these are little... Can you see that? It's a little loop instead of an actual lead. Is this one like that? Should probably push that first. No, this one's an actual lead. Everywhere around where I just heated up became... I'm trying to put autofocus back on. Became incredibly hot. I'm beginning to think these things have a heat problem. I mean, as soon as I plug it in, the chipsets are starting to burn me. Actually, I, I think they make a console to USB cable. So I may or may not try to use this for something. Let's just fix everything I undid. I'm going to try to reassemble it now. Of course the phone is standing on top of the case as to get a good angle. Uh oh, bent the LED. Maybe when I get back to Pennsylvania, I will uh, attempt to incorporate this into my network, which I am still yet to do a video on. That whole network is built from essentially 80s technology, 80s and 90s technology. You got old Linksys uh, Bay networking stuff. So that's kind of. Oh, where did I put the feet? Here's two. Though this only had three feet on it. Don't know why. What I'm guessing is when we had the network set up in our old house, this needed to be serviced or something. Because we had huge networking switches for all the PCs in the house. And when I say PC, back like in the 2000s, 90s, I'm not talking like Microsoft PC or uh, Windo not Windows, uh, IBM PCs, just like computers in general. Most of them were Sun OS and Unix systems, well, Sun Microsystems and Unix systems. Well, they're all Unix. <laughs> all I can say is I don't think my family's ever been too... Uh, appreciative of DOS and Windows. Like, we still... The two, compu two or three computers I use the most are a Linux, a Unix, and the Windows machine. 
even my phone is Unix. That's what Android is based on. It's Unix with a uh, C++ interface, like the uh, user interface was designed, not designed, programmed in C++. So, I'm going to try to do a better teardown next time. I just found this laying around and I didn't think or know if we needed it. So I just wanted to look at it and see if how it worked. But, I'm going to try to find something to tear down or do at least a better tear down on some other time. But till then, thank you guys for watching and see you next time.